Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24. The title of the message is, It's for your own good. It's for your own good. It's for your own good. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24. The Bible says, And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, Amen. for our good always, again, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for your love that you showed us on the cross at Calvary through Jesus Christ, who shed his precious blood on the cross, for your blood does atone for all of our sins, Lord, past, present, and future. And thank you, Lord, for, the, for your eternal gift of salvation, that there is nothing that we have to do on our end in order for us to get to heaven. It was finished when you took all of our sins, Lord, and you bore it on yourself, for your precious blood washes away all of our sins. We thank you, Lord. Father, we pray unto you to please help us to cease from our own understanding. Please help us to have the fear of you, Lord God, and not the fear of man. Lord, we pray unto you to allow our heart to understand your knowledge and for our ear to hear what the preacher has to say unto us, Lord, through your word, the King James Bible, which is the truth in this world, Lord. And we thank you that we can come to you and worship you in spirit. Father, we pray unto you to please fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit so that he may preach unto us, Lord, that we may change from inside out and from our heart within so that we may be pure, and be more holy unto you, Lord. Father, we pray unto you to please help us to abstain from all appearance of evil. For the world we live in is a God-forsaken world. And for your word is the truth and the light in this world, Lord. We pray unto you to please bless this message, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 It's for your own good. You hear that phrase many, many times. You hear it from your parents, you hear it from your teachers, you hear it from even just uh, some random person that you don't know. They say it's for your own good. A lot of times the phrase is related to some negative things to you per se. When you're a little child, your parents say, eat those vegetables. It's for your own good. But you hate it, right? When you're growing up and you're in your pur puberty, and your parents go, come home by 8 p.m. It's for your own good. Your parents go, don't go to those parties. It's for your own good. And as you grow older, you get married, your wives tell husbands, don't eat too much sugar. Don't eat those you know, donuts out there. It's for your own good. Amen. Man, it's, when you hear the phrase, it's for your own good, a lot of times it's related to something that you are restricted to do. The Word of God says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24, for our good always. What is for our good always? To do all these statutes, to obey God's commands, and to fear the Lord our God. And then what does the Bible say? For our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. You have to understand, God gave us his commands so that he could preserve us, so that he could give us all the blessings that he wants to give us. You know, I don't want this message to be like humanistic, you know, just like one of those things like Joe Austin, you know, you, you're going to be blessed and blessed. But God does bless people. You know, in a Bible-believing circle, people think that we're all just hellfire, you know, Bible-dumping preaching all the yeah. time. All no, that's just a given fact that God is just God. Amen. 
However, God rewards His children justly as well. So when it comes to it's for your own good, point number one is that salvation is free and simple. It's for your own good. If salvation was not simple and free, it wouldn't be good for us because we have to do something to obtain that salvation. So that's why God said, for your own good, I sent, him my, I sent my begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for all your sins on the cross so that you won't have to do anything. It's for your own good. However, because human beings are so proud and stubborn, they say, no, 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 it's not for my own good, Lord God. You know, I have to do something. Isn't that ironic? When parents say, okay, you eat this and you don't eat this, it's for your own good. Because they know what's best for you. When Almighty God says it's for your own good, you just trust Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and that's all you have to do? People say, no, 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 no. You hear it all the time from kids. Okay, don't do this. Because I've gone through it before. I experienced it before. I was a high school. I was a teenager. I was, you know, a child before. You know, I was in my 20s before. And then children always, their reaction is, you know, you're too restrictive, right? You don't like me. You always want to confine me in a space. You want to put me in a fence. You know, you want to put me in your own, you know, prison. But as the years go by, as time passes by, and you become their age, and you realize why they said that to you. And then you go, man, you know, my parents are wise. You know, I was a fool. Human beings understand like that. And what do you think when it comes to God's understanding? You and I can't understand God completely. I mean, we'll never be able to. No. He's an infinite being. Amen. But at least what he did was that he became a human being, took your place, my place, and died on the cross for us. And so all we have to do is trust him as our Lord and Savior, and that's for your own good. Because if you reject this simple, free salvation, what happens to you? You're going to burn in hell forever. Simple. No simple. I mean, I mean, that's as simple as it gets. Amen. During this church age, right, that's why you have to believe what the Bible says to yeah. specific people during specific time. During this time, the Bible says, trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you'll have eternal life. Do you have to get baptized? No. Do you have to do good works? No. no. Do you have to... Give more money? No. You have to do more, you know, charity work? Nah. No. Do you have to flog yourself? Do you have to go to a covenant? Do you have to see Jesus in your dreams? No. Do you have to speaking in some gibberish in order to receive this free salvation? Never. During this time, all you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It's for your own good. For anyone who's here and who's listening, in the internet, if you don't resolve this, number one, salvation issue, everything that comes after is no good. Because at the end of the day, you're going to wake up in hell. That's right. At the end of the day, you're going to be gnashing your teeth in torment. And it, this is not just a temporary torment. It's eternal torment and suffering. When, if you know for sure that if I receive this, for example, there's a vitamin, special vitamin, and it's not real, okay? It's, I'm just, you know, making it up. There's a special vitamin that could make you live forever, keep you healthy forever at the age of 33 and a half years old, right? In your prime. Who be fool to not take it, right? right? Yeah. You don't have to face death. I don't know about you guys, even the bravest men, when they are faced with death, yes. they become cowards. Yes. They become chickens. Yes. I mean, there are, of course, exceptions to the rule, very stubborn, hard-nosed people. And if they're not saved, they're going to wake up in hell anyways. But if you get a pill that if you eat it, you'll never have to worry about death. You don't have to worry about burning in hell. You just live eternally. I mean, people will take it, right? Exactly. 
Yeah. And the, but you have to take it every single day. Then you do it every single day. Yes. Because it's life or death situation. So when it comes to salvation, you have to think of it like that. If you haven't trusted Jesus Christ and Him alone as your Lord and Savior, then you're playing with fire, eternal fire. It's no good for you if you don't accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and Him alone. Why? Because God said it's for your own good. You obey Him, it's for your own good. The fear of the Lord involves salvation. Why? Because you fear to burn in hell, yeah. which is created by God. And that Almighty God deserves that fear. Amen. If you fear God, and if you truly say that, you know what, I worship and I want to obey God, then you do as what He says. And when it comes to salvation, then you forget about anything that you ever knew in the past, all the junk that you heard from all this, you know, preachers out there, yeah. whether it's physical or internet or anywhere, you just say, okay, what does the Bible say? I'm going to trust what the Bible says, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to believe. I know I'm a sinner on my way to hell. I'm going to turn away from my ways, turn to God, and trust Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And the Bible says you have eternal life. Amen. Simple as that. That's one good that you have to have. I, mean, I don't care whatever happens afterwards. It's between you and God and, you know, how you're going to live your Christian life. Yeah. But you have to receive that. I mean, that is the worst and that's like the most foolish decision you could ever make is rejecting that offer right. from the Lord. And it's free. Then if you do accept that free gift, knowing that it's for your own good for all eternity, then you have become Christian. You know, Bible says in John 1.12, but as many as received and to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. That's it. That's the requirement. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you become child of God. Simple as that. It's not about you, you know, seeing Jesus and him ha having to tell you, you're my child, to be child of God. Devil. It's not about you born into a Christian family to be a child of God. You can never say you're a child of God just because your mom and dad were believers, right? No. You have your own heart. Yes. And then you're never predestined to be a child of God, as Calvinists say. You have a free will. Yes. Of course, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're predestined to be in his own image yes. later on. Amen. But there's a condition. How does that happen? You have to trust him yes. from your free will. And if you have done that, man, brethren, because you're no longer friends. I mean, you are still friends, you know, technically, but you are my brother and sister in Christ. Woo! You have become one body in Christ. And everyone that you see around you, if they have trusted Jesus Christ as their own Savior, for their own good. Again, it's for your own good. It's, I'm not talking about it's the good of Johnny out there, good of, you know, Jan out there or anybody, John Doe, Jane Doe. No, it's for your own good. Because when it comes to your own good, your perspective and your behaviors change. It's for your own good that you eat that vitamin so that you won't die tomorrow. Then you eat it. Yes. Unless your life is so miserable that you want to die, right? Even then, when you're faced with death, you're going to be like, ah. I'm gonna go get the, you know, I'm gonna go get that pill and eat it. That's 99.9999% of the people out there. You know, I don't want anybody to be a smart aleck out there, and be like, oh yeah, you know, that woman jumped onto the moving train, you know. I mean, that, how many people do that, right? I Man, it's rare. Yeah. But majority of people will do what's good for them. I mean, if it's for your own good, okay, if, if say some government goes, okay, you get free housing, right? You know, all you have to do is make sure that you wait at 7 p.m. You know, on a Saturday morning at a specific place, and you get a free house. It's for your own good. You know, millions of people go there. They'll just flock over there, right? Because it's for their own good. Yeah. If it's your child's good, parents will do anything this day and age, right? If, if, you know, your child having that tutor 
and that tutor requires money, but it will help your child become a better student and help that child to go to a better school. Many of the parents will do anything for their own child's good. If that meal will make your child grow. For example, if your child is only like, you know, very small and they need to grow, but you hear that, hey, your child could grow exponentially if they eat this food, then you're gonna do what you can to make sure that they eat that food so they could grow. Because you want, as a human being, you want what's good for you and what's good for your family. And for some people, they want what's good for others if you're not as selfish as other people. Then, when God says it's for your own good, you really have to listen. You can't neglect it. I mean, second thing is that when it comes to it's for your own good, you have to know that God's word is only there to help me and benefit me. That's it. A lot of people think that God's word is just a restriction. They see God as killjoy, right? Oh, yeah, you know, I want to enjoy this pleasure. But every time I go to the word of God, every time I listen to some preaching, every time I'm doing some Bible study, it says no, 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 and no, right? right. I want to smoke. No. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I want to lie. No. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I want to steal. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You know what? You know, I want to fornicate. You know, I want to have some pleasure. No, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Man, I want to have, I just want to get angry. You know, I'm full of wrath, you know. No, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Think about it. All this stuff, all this commands in the Word of God is for your benefit. You have to, you have to understand that. Then, when you know it's for your own benefit, what should you do? You got to be wanting it more and more and more. We always go to this stuff, right? If you know that exercising is for your own benefit and it's for your own good, and you start doing it and you see the results, you're going to do it more and more. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard, but your brain goes, you know what? Man, even though you're tired, you've been doing it every day since the beginning of the year. Continue to do it because it's for your own benefit. Then you love to do it. I mean, for example, I mean, some people love playing video games, right? And they know it's for their own good. Can you imagine them saying no to the best video game experience because they're just too tired? I haven't seen any gamers out there who just stop playing because they're just too tired. They go on and on and on to experience it. They want to finish it. If, they, if someone were to tell you that, okay, hey, you need to have this type of, I don't know, tools and weapons to beat another level, but it's free for you to just grab it and then beat it. And it's only happening you know, tonight between 8 and 9 p.m. Unless someone's dead in your family, you're going to probably try to get to that game and get to that level and then just try to finish it out. Same thing with anything else, right? Relationship wise. Oh yeah, you know, you like this guy or girl and they say, you know what? Meet me at, you know, 8 p.m. somewhere, you know, let's meet, right? And then you really like that girl, you like that guy, you know, and then within even a unsafe or safe, you know, you're like, okay, this is an opportunity to get to know that person, maybe you could go further. You're not going to stop, right? Because you're a little tired today. You know, you just got to work at 7 p.m. and then you're supposed to meet that person at 8. Or you're going to be like, hey, you know, I'm just too tired. I don't want to meet you anymore. No, that's not you. You're still going to go. Yeah. Even though your body's tired, your mind's tired because you have a goal. Because you know that it's for your own good. But when it comes to the Word of God, do you feel the same? Do you feel that, you know what, Word of God only helps and benefits me? I mean, when was the last time you had that kind of attitude when it comes to the Word of God? It's like, man, Word of God benefits me, Word of God helps me, so I need it more and more. If 
if, if you, you know, Brother Nathan could do all the sit-ups and pull-ups and bench press for you so that you could become as strong as like him, you know, you just let him do it, right? Yes. You don't say no, right? Yeah. Because you want to be stronger. You want to yes. be healthier. Because, you know, it's for your own benefit. It's for your own good. But when it comes to the word of God, you don't have that attitude. You don't have that desire. You don't have that longing. You're like, I read the word of God. I read three chapters today, but I didn't get anything out of it. First of all, you might have had a bad attitude, right? Yeah. You just read it, not for your own benefit. You just read it because you felt like you had to read it or else your parents will spank you, right? But when you read it because you know that it will give you benefit and it will help you, even if you read five chapters, three chapters, only you remember two verses, yes. that's God giving you that blessing. Yes. You know, Word of God will stop you from doing a lot of things. Amen. The restriction needs to be in place. Yes. As Christians, you and I need to understand that if without the restrictions in our life, if it's a free-for-all society, what's going to happen? Chaos, you're going to commit all the sins that in the world. Wicked. That's why God has given us the word of God, Amen. to put a fence around us. Yes. Man, I wish I knew this earlier, maybe before even I got saved yes. in the late teenage years. Man, that, that I could have avoided a lot of heartaches yes. because those things don't disappear. I thought it was for my own good, but it wasn't. It's for my destruction. Yes. Things that you've done before you got saved will never disappear. That's right. Devil will do everything he can to remind you. Yes. I mean, think about it. If you drunk, I mean, if you drank and you are a drunk before you got saved, don't you think that your flesh wants that? Yeah. Don't you think that your flesh wants to experience and feel that pleasure over and over and over? then what do you think your flesh is going to do? It's going to tell you, it's for your own benefit. Let's grab some Coors. Let's grab some Budweiser. Let's grab whatever drinks out there. You know, let's get some hard liquor, right? You know, it's okay. It's for your own good. You're a Christian. It's okay. You know, you're living a tough Christian life. You know, a little bit of drink won't bother you, right? You know, like, oh, grab some, you know, pack of, you know, Marlboros out there, right? You know, it's okay to smoke. Hey, you know, California legalized it. A bunch of other states legalized it. Hey, let's get some green stuff, right? You know, will you smoke some joint? It's, it's for your own good. You've been deceived by the devil. You're, you're the type of person who goes around and tells people that, you know what? These Bible believers, man, they're killjoys, right? They're party poopers, you know? They always say, don't do this, don't do that, right? Man, I hate being around with my sister, my brother, my mom, my dad, you know, my uncle, my aunt, who's a Bible believer, because every time I'm there, you know, you know all the other family members are drinking, but they look at me and like, or friends are drinking, they're like, no, no, no drinking, right? No, no smoking, right? Oh, man, they start coughing out loud, so they'll let you know. You know, I hate that smell of marijuana, right? I mean, it's there. It's for your own good. And as a Christian, if you don't recognize and realize that, like today, all the restrictions that God has put in your life for your own benefit through the Word of God, yes. then you're going to be destroyed. Amen. I, I, mean, I think this is one of the scariest Verses, but it's also, you know, best verses out there. Romans 8, 13. If you live after the flesh, you shall die. God will kill you. Amen. It's not like all the humanistic people out there, you know, Lord loves you, loves you, loves you. Of course God loves you as his child. But as a loving father, he has to chastise you. Amen. And that chastisement might be your death. Yes. It's for your own good. To me, if it's best for my own good that I die, then I'll have to accept it. So be it. Yeah. That's why so many Christians, at a young age, they die. Yes. Why? Because they're living like the devil. Right. They never have gotten right with the Lord. Then the same thing with you. If you're not going to get right with the Lord, 
if you don't go to the Word of God as a source of help and benefit, forget it. You're not going to live long. I mean, go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24. I mean, the Bible specifically says, if you obey God's command, you fear the Lord, it's for your own good. Why? That he might preserve us alive, that you could live longer. If you want to live longer and do more stuff for God, be in the ministry longer until the Lord comes back or until you leave this earth, then you have to obey. And someone said it wisely. You know, obedience is not an option. It's not. When you think of obedience as options, that's when you start disobeying. If obedience was not an option to you, and you know that you just have to obey no matter what, then it's going to help you. So get that thing out of your mindset. You know, with so much options out there, you know, school system, everybody telling you, you know, you could be this and that, you know, no, there's no right and wrong nowadays, right? Get rid of those mindset. Especially children and students in college. I mean, your teachers and professors will keep on telling you, yeah, your opinion matters, you know. There's wrong, no wrong answer. There are a lot of wrong answers. Yeah. And they know it, too. They're just playing their games, right? Yeah. They don't want bad reviews on their, you know, survey at the end of the semester, especially those are in, you know, probation or whatnot. If yeah. they haven't been tenured, you know, yeah, yeah. You said, you know, this thing's okay. You said, you know, you know sodomy, right? You said, you know, homosexuality, like all those things are okay, right? But, I mean, if you're a Bible believer, it's not okay. Right. If you believe in the Word of God, it's against the Word of God. Yeah. I mean, God has given a, you know, right family structure. Yes. Man and woman and children. You know, not man, man, and woman, woman. That's not how God structured the family. Right. But this world makes everything okay. I mean, what are our young children reading at school and being taught? If you don't want to be a boy, it's okay. You could be a girl. If you're a girl, but if you don't want to be a girl and you could be a boy, you're a boy. I mean, they're gender neutral everywhere. Can you imagine if you're a child at a school and the teacher identifies itself as a it, so I could go to man or woman's bathroom anytime I want? I'll be scared. I'll never send my kid to that kind of you know, educational system. I mean, we hear so many stories out there. I mean, women are women and men are men. I mean, this guy thinks he's a woman suddenly. And then he goes to the woman's locker room. And I'm like, you know, I'm a woman, girls. You don't look like a woman, right? You could try. And obviously, your physical things don't show that you're a woman. Yeah. You're a man. But society accepts it. You know what's going to happen to you? You're going to be just like society. If you don't hold on to the word of God, if you don't keep God's commandment, and then you don't go to it as help, every time you need help, don't go to your counselor. Don't go to your best friend. Go to the word of God first. You have to. I mean, of course, there's men of God out there to give you counsel and give you advice. You know, that's why you meet at church. You have a communication. But the word of God should be always your final authority Amen. for your obedience. Good if your wife says, hey, honey, you know, we've been going to church for a long time. You know what? I think we need to take some time off. We'll just watch online. Well, one of the comments says, you know, you, gotta, you can't forsake the gathering. You got to meet at the church. It's for your own benefit, right? Again, you know, your fellowship. You know, you're being in the ministry, you get exalted, encouraged, and then you build up the body of Christ like that. What are you going to do? What if God says, go? Your wife, your husband goes, no, go. I mean, is that an option? There shouldn't be an option in the first place. No. And I'm sorry, honey. The word of God says, go. So I, I cannot disobey the word of God. 
Um, as simple as that. And when it comes down to you either obey God or you obey anything else. Man, it, I'm sorry. At the end of the day, you may f- make other party, your husband, wife, children, mom, and dad feel kind of sad for that moment. Their feelings might be hurt for that moment. But when you stand up for the word of God, God will bring everything to all right. What does that mean? Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are they call according to his purpose. If you obey the word of God, if you follow the word of God, if you obey his commands, you know it helps you and benefits you. However the hard the situation is, God makes it all right. God makes it actually better. I mean, look at, you know, prime example. I'm saying nobody's Job here, right? But Job obeyed the Lord, even though he lost everything. He got blessed more and more, much, much more. You know, in this day and age, don't think that you're going to be blessed with material things per se. You know, you have a lot better things waiting for you in heaven. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But spiritually speaking, you know, the Lord's going to bless you. And then you standing up for what's right will influence other person. They'll get to understand. I mean, your job as a Bible-believing Christian is that through your life, of course, souls get saved through your testimony and witnessing, but also people around you become better. I mean, that's your job. I mean, are you that selfish? You don't care about others? I mean, it's just like a person who goes... I don't care. I have my own life. You know, I could be jealous on my own. I could be envious on my own. You know, I could do all these things. But your mommy and daddy's crying because of you. Your bad testimony is bring, bringing that bad testimony to the church. I mean, you're disappointing everybody. And you're like, you know what? It's just my life, right? So many people have that kind of attitude. You're like, you know what? It's just me. Just me, 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 me. If, if it was just you, 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 then why did the Lord die for you? Right? The Lord shouldn't even have considered you in the first place. Yeah. I mean, the Lord died for you for a purpose. Amen. I mean, obviously, then as a human being, I mean, animals, man, if you do good to them, they're very appreciative. Yes. But so a lot of times, you and me, human beings, are no better than animals out there. You're no better than dogs. Amen. Cats, I don't know. I, don't, I never raised a cat, so I don't know how they feel. But, you know, I mean, dogs, right? They're always obedient, no matter what. And they remember all the good things that you've ever done to them. Yes. And then they're not that selfish like you, right? Yeah. And... That makes us realize, man, how selfish and stubborn I have been as a Christian. So-called Bible-believing Christian, I say I stand up for King James Bible, I obey the Word of God, but my life never shows it. All I do is complain about restrictions, restrictions, restrictions. Why does church start at 10? Why couldn't it start at 10.30 so I could get 30 minutes extra sleep? You know, if, if we were to... Push back our church time 10.30, you show up at 11. You always show up at 30 minutes later. That's you. I mean, don't think that just because, you know, some time changes, you're going to change. You're fooling yourself. If you go to work late all the time, you're going to go to work late all the time, even if work changes from starting time from 9 to 10. You're that you. Then what does have to change? It's got to come from your heart. You have to completely understand that it's for my own good. When you realize that it's for my own good, then you will change. That's a human being. If you know that word of God, obeying it is for my own good, then you got to change. There's no options for me. If I don't obey the word of God, then I'm going to be punished. I'm going to disappoint my Lord and Savior. I'm going to grieve the Holy Ghost. I'm going to reap what I sow. So I'm going to obey the word of God no matter what. It's for my own good. 
if our kids, including myself, when I was a kid in the back in the days, realized that you know eating eating nutritious food was good for me, you know, I'll be living more healthy. I mean, it's all in God's hand, but right, you know, eating vegetables all the time, carrots, yes. onions, broccoli, celery, you know, just eating it all the time because I know it's for my own good. It's going to keep me more healthy, right? But I'm like, oh, it's not good for me because you just don't want to eat it, right? It's not good for me. I just don't want to obey the word of God. It's not good. You know, abstain from all appearance of evil. No, no, it's not good for me. You know, I do have to see some dirty pictures because that's going to satisfy my lust and my pleasure. I have to meet these people, you know, so that I could get my part of pleasure. You know, but even the Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. No, 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 no. That's too restrictive. No, I can't. You know, I can't. That's not good for me. Then obedience is an option for you. Yeah. You know, you don't even talk about obedience if it's an option for you. I mean, obedience is just yes or no. Can you imagine if you're in the military? Your sergeant goes, wake up, private. No, sir. I have an option to just sleep in a little bit. Of course, you know, you get 100 push-ups. You know, you're going to be crying, you know. You know, but you're like, oh, and then at the end of the day, you're going to be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Next time, Sergeant goes, wake up, private. You, even if before he says it, you hear the first, you know, word that comes out, letter, wait, and then you're already awake, and you're doing it. I mean, that's how you and I should be. Amen. I mean, if a bunch of your friends are headed towards this, you know, devil's ground, right? Oh, yeah, we're going to the party, you know. Like, but you don't have to smoke. You don't have to drink. You don't have to fornicate. You don't have to do anything. Just be with us because we're part of the gang, right? Very enticing. Yeah. What should you do according to the word of God? Right. I mean, you run the other way, yes. you know. I don't want to have friends who's going to come in, I mean, make me sin. I mean, they're not your real friend. Can you believe it? Amen. You know, you try to look cool whether it's at school, whether it's at work, but they make you do things that are contrary to the word of God, they're not the friends that God wants you to have, even if they're saved. Don't think that just because they're saved, they're good influence. There are many, many saved Christians who do everything, steal, lie, yeah. they drink, yeah. you know, they fornicate, they, you know, just bad testimony. Right. Yeah. And if, you're in that part of the gang, you have to get out. You have to get right with the Lord. Because what does the word of God say? It's for your own good. What happened to Eve? God provided everything. It's for her own good. But when she started listening to the devil, you know what? I think something else is better for me. You know, I need that fruit. Instead of just listening to God, instead of trusting that it's for her own good and Adam's own good, she's like, you know what? There's something better for my own good. She went out of the restriction. She went out of the fence that God has built in. Same thing with you. God has built this fence protective fence around you, word of God. You go out of it, then you're going to commit some sins that you'll regret the rest of your life. That's right. If you haven't already, I mean, people reminisce a lot. Yes. Especially your life isn't going the way you wanted it to be. If you're not where you want it to be like 10 years ago, five years ago, you start reminiscing. And then people look at some photos, right? Oh, man, 10 years ago, I was at this place. Oh, how I wish I could go back. 20 years ago, oh, man, I was like this. Oh, how I wish I could go back. Older ones, like 30, 40 years ago, oh, how I wish I could go back and start all over. You can't. You can't go back. That's right. So you forget about it. Yes. If it was something wrong that you've done, you get right with the Lord. 
and then start over. The worst thing that a human being can do is always reminisce in the past so that you can't go forward. Yeah. You're always turning around. You know, I wish I made this decision back then. Yeah, we all wish. That's why people want time machine, right? So you could go back and change things. But you can't. Amen. Then Bible has clear solution. You want everything to go well? You want everything to be done for your own good now? Obey God's commandment. Fear the Lord. That's it. Man, wow. You know, as I was preparing, man, Lord, you are such a, how should I say, amazing God who gives such a simple solutions to simpletons like me. I mean, I, I, I want it simple, right? I don't want this complicated, you know, formulas out there, right? I just want A, B, C, one, two, three. Lord says, Obey my command and fear me. And then God says, you know, it's for your own good always. If I want what's good for me, my family, and everybody else around me, right? I just need to obey and fear God. Simple as that. If you don't understand that, you know, talk to me afterwards, right? You know, talk to brethren. Talk to the Lord, right? Because if you have never been punished in your life, then maybe you don't know what fear is. But hey, I know for sure that Lord has brought fear in your life here and there. Yes, for sure. Did you almost die in a car accident in the past? Yes. Were you ever really severely sick, uh -huh. right? Was your heart broken to the point you didn't want to live any longer? Yes, sir. Some of those things did happen in your life. Then you know whom to fear. Amen. You fear the Lord. And you know those days when after you got saved, you neglected the word of God. You still do, many of you. Yeah. You stop obeying the word of God. Many of you still do. Yeah. You don't understand the benefits of the word of God. You still don't. Then God has given you and me this opportunity to get right. I mean, again, 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. First thing that you and I need to do is just go to the Lord. Amen. Just get right with the Lord. And then just obey. You know, maybe I should have a, I should make a plaque, right? Obedience is not an option. Maybe it will, it will help me become a better human being, better Christian. Because many times I think it's an option. I get fooled that it's an option. And then I go down that road and I commit sin. I fall into temptation. But when you know he's saying obedience, just like our brother prayed and said, you'll be running away. Amen. It will save you from heartache. It will save you from all the sins. It will save you from every, every wrong that's going to come your way. And God has given us that solution. Christians, look at your life right now. Does Deuteronomy 6.24 part of your life? Have you applied that in your life yet? Or have you done it in the past, but because of the life's ups and downs, you've neglected it, and then you backslid in? It's never too late. You could always go back to the Lord. Word of God never changes. Our Lord never changes. It's you who moved. It's you who changed. But you could always go back. Thank God for his grace and mercy. Thank God that you and I are still alive, able to hear and able to see so that we could get right. Once you get right with the Lord, man, people say, I want peace, 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 peace. You have that peace. You don't get right with the Lord. You don't obey the word of God. You don't fear the word. Uh, you don't fear God. Then you'll never have peace. I'll rather live the rest of my life obeying God, fearing him with peace in my heart than trying to take my chances with the flesh, the devil, and the world. The choice is yours. Let's pray.